So now, I'll be, as, as part of the SharePoint installation, we need to install the, the prerequisites that go along with that. Um, I know the prerequisite installer requires an internet connection. How, how, do, you, how do you go about uh, running the, the prerequisite installer and getting that software in your system? For right. The first step of that is running the prerequisite installer, which is where SharePoint needs a whole series of, of uh, hot fixes and um, service packs brought down onto the machine and installed on the machine. It also needs to turn on a web server because it needs to add that to the server roles and it does that in the prereq installer to kind of get your machine ready to uh, host SharePoint. Um, most of those files, if you're fortunate to have an internet connection on your system, you just run the prereq installer, it reaches out on the internet, pulls all the patches down for you and you're all squared away. Um, if you don't have the internet, uh, an internet um, connection, um, then what you need to do is either install each fix line by line, and the trick for doing that is to run the prereq installer, let it fail, and it will then generate a log file which tells you what patch or hot fix it was trying to install. It tells you what URL it was accessing. You go to that URL, you get the file, you bring it down, you save it, you run it by hand, and then you go on to the next step, it fails, and you do it step by step by step. There's like 9, 10, 11, 12 different hot fixes that have to be installed. Alternatively, you can run the pre-installer in a mode. There is a command line version of the pre-installer where, where you can run the pre-installer and give it the files that you want to have the pre-installer run. Um, I don't particularly like that approach because these hot fixes will periodically be fixed um, and the URLs will be, will be updated um, uh, uh, over time. And so this way, if you do it yourself interactively, then you get the latest and greatest, just as if you did have an internet connection. So I find that's the most, that's the most uh, uh, straightforward way to do it. It's not the, it's not the cleanest way because you've got to do it step by step by step by step, but it is a way to do it. What are you going to do first, Dave, when you install SharePoint on the system? Okay, well, we talked about the pre-installer. Let's run the pre-installer and see what that looks like. So when you just go to your uh, area where you've downloaded the bits and you run the pre-installer and it sees that it lists, oh, like a 10, 11 different um, things that it needs to do. And this is where I said it needed hot fixes and it needs service packs and it needs to install a bunch of software, update a bunch of software. And as you see up here, it also needs to add the web server application role to the, to the operating system. So it does that for you automatically. So you, we click on next, we accept the terms of the license, and we go ahead and run it. And it takes a couple minutes to go ahead and, and do that. The first, as you can see here, it's adding the web server role to the operating system. And that will run for a couple minutes. And then it will reach out on the internet and try to uh, download the various service packs and hot fixes and things like that that are needed for the system. So we'll just kind of let this run for a little bit and see how we do. Okay, so then you see a status of all the different hot fixes and roles that we added and we're all, we're all done. Um, and um, uh, at this point in time, because I don't, really don't know the status of the various hot fixes and things like that, I find it a good kind of defensive mechanism to just go ahead and reboot. So we'll go ahead and reboot and then we'll get the, do the SharePoint um, installation on the on the next step. Sounds okay. Good. Okay. So uh, so we're back after our reboot and uh, we've logged back in and we're all ready to go. So we go to our distribution folder and now we're ready to start um, installing SharePoint. And the first thing I wanted to do was to kind of give you a hint or a trick around how you make sure that this is the right SharePoint installation or distribution that you're working with. Uh, because there are many versions of SharePoint, there's Foundation uh, Services, which is the new version of uh, Windows SharePoint Services. Uh, there's all kinds of different versions of SharePoint floating around. How do you know that this is an Enterprise Edition distribution to be able to actually do your installation? installation? So the trick there is to look at the folder structure. You'll see here there's a folder that's created for Access Services. There's a folder for Excel services. There's a folder for Visio services. And all of this is a giveaway that the, this is a server distribution and not um, a um, foundation services or something like that. So this is a good, this is a good distribution and one that we can use for setup. 
Uh, and this is where we ran the prereq installer. Um, and so now we're just going to go ahead and run setup and uh, get set up, up and going. Now, you'll notice that after I ask for the license agreement and the file location, you'll notice that this is a slightly different set of sequence of events than what we did when we ran SharePoint on a regular server. On a regular server, you would have seen some additional screens here mm -hmm. that asked you whether or not you wanted to do a farm installation or a standalone installation, and whether or not you wanted a custom uh, or a, a um, uh, a complete installation or whether or not you wanted a standalone installation as far as the, the, the type of bits that you wanted to lay down. Uh, and with normal, normal uh, Power Pivot you have to answer farm and you have to answer complete. And then you go to this. Since we're already on a domain controller, the only supported configuration is a farm with a complete distribution and so, uh, supported on a domain controller. It doesn't even ask you. So that's the reason why we're not even asking you. We've already run DC Promo, so we're already on a domain controller. So thus, the SharePoint installation just goes right through. So that's what's happening and the reason why. This may be a little bit different from your experience if you didn't yet have a domain controller installed on the system. If you weren't yet a full domain controller, it would ask you the farm question and it would ask you the complete question and you have to answer farm and complete. Here we're on a domain control. It just just assumes that those are the answers and just moves right on through. Um, and so we just go ahead and install it. Pushing up and we're in our last series of stages and updates for the for the um, for the for that stage of the conf of uh, running uh, of installing SharePoint, and now we get to the all con all important run configuration wizard screen, which is where all what you're going to do is uncheck this checkbox so that we don't run the configuration wizard. This is what you do when you're doing new server. With new server, you uncheck that, and then you let the SQL Server setup do the configuration of the farm. If you were going to use the existing farm configuration, then you do need to check this checkbox and run the farm configuration wizards um, so that it's so that the farm is available when you run SQL. But we're not doing that. We're doing a new server installation. So we uncheck the checkbox, then you hit close, and then we're done as far as the SharePoint step is concerned. If you hadn't yet run DC Promo, you need to run DC Promo at this point in time and get the domain controller up because the next and last phase is doing a SQL Server setup. And for that, we have to have a domain controller up and running if you're on a standalone a SQL Server. Okay, so that's the next step. Let's go to that one.